have. Yeah, that's true. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next episode of the Cathode Ray Podcast. We are back online with my friend Steve Nutter. We're going to be talking about what we were doing. We've both had some crazy times this week. We're going to talk about that. And to start the episode, we're going to speak about a few of the projects that we have, technical projects that we've been working on this week. Steve, how you doing, mate? Oh, well, I'm doing pretty good, Lewis. It uh, feels like a little bit of a hiatus we had there, but yeah, I'm uh, always happy to see you and to get back here to talk. Uh, about things and the good thing like you said about taking a little bit of a break we have plenty of things going on and we get some good technical stuff stacked up to talk about we've been doing that so yeah it's been a little while i've been off doing this new uh leadership training that i'm working on we're gonna get in that later in the episode steve as i know you did last episode we talked about the daddy dance that yep. you had to do so oh god i can't wait to oh to yeah hear this one as well so we're gonna get into those stories as well as we look at a little of the CRT news, I'm looking at a CRT I want to pick up. I want some of Steve's thoughts. Thought we'd do that live. So let's start with you, Steve. What have you been technically working on this week? Okay, so, well, let's finish out last week. I did have a stream where I finally looked and tore apart my prison TV, which is oh, yeah. the all clear one. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a lot of fun. I did have some interesting things come up with that. Uh, that chassis looks to be very like moddable and things if oh, good. if i can figure some things out so that's exciting i okay, was so it's able not a to drop in rgb mod but you think what with some circuitry or well like? yeah so the issue is it's rf only okay so okay. of course uh, no one's using the hdmi player in the prison no it's all <laughs> yeah. all right makes sense. it's rf only uh -huh. so you have that issue where you're gonna have to try to get it over to some kind of an input so I have to somehow get it to go from RF into an input mode. But the chip does have like an o it has an OSD jungle chip with RGB lines and voltage and OSD and everything you would need to do a RGB mod. So I don't know. I I also thought uh I also thought I'd talk to Shank and see what he thought on I mean, how amazing would it be to have like adaptive LED lighting inside the CRT, <laughs> yes. you know, I was like, that would be incredible. So I so don't, that but project, that, that's way over my head, but for maybe. For people that are listening, Shank, our good friend Shank produced, he made one of his Wii portables that he and his company that he founded do really well, but he made it with a clear shell and he's got some extra circuitry and LEDs inside. So the, the LEDs react to the light. If one side of the screen is blue, then the LEDs on that side of the screen are going to be blue too. Now, dude, if you pop that into a prison CRT, oh, that's that's a life of the party right there. Yeah, I, I think that would be awesome. So I don't know. That kind of mod would definitely have to have uh, Shank to help on. So sure. we'll see. Uh, but that was going on, and um, I, I wound up cleaning it up. It's sitting – actually, I moved it into my um, living room area, and I've got a GameCube hooked up to it because I have a really nice uh, RF modulator. Okay, composite right. to do, rf modulator yep. which speaking of is another thing that we'll be getting down the road the mr add-ons rf modulator yes. you know so this that's super cool. but that's super that's going to cool. be a couple of weeks i think before that happens at least uh but so that crt has, has been set up it's really great got a great picture uh but i've been excited to work on that one and then the thing that i got in the shop was the legendary monster crt a working FW900. <laughs> yes, the big one, the big daddy, as endorsed by John Linneman himself, uh, as endorsed by every YouTuber who wants to get their, 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 their clicks up there. This is the granddaddy of available CRT monitors. Well, available. Available. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, this is, I mean, we've had like Linus do a video with him the last year on mm -hmm. this thing. And so I have a, a Patreon member who has brought it in. It's in a beautiful flight case that he had made new, actually. Dang. And it is for the FW900. Again, it's custom made. And uh, he told me how much it cost. You want to know? <laughs> okay, so he bought it for a pretty penny? Yeah. We had to call uh, the comp. There's companies that still make them. Because oh, the people, flight case. Sorry, the yeah, flight, the flight case. case. Yes, yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. the flight case. Oh, what, okay, grand. One. I'm going grand on the flight case. It's a pretty good guess. It was about 700 so right. a little bit under that. 
so yeah, but that's what it's in. Um, I also got a connection cable to go to Windows that he included with the package. He also included a retro uh, Windows XP laptop that is supposed to be able to uh, connect to Windows. He says it's actually done it. He's like, if if you want to do it and mm. I'll pay for the time if you want to adjust it that way. So there's a couple guys that are uh, like kingpins on the Discord server that really know how to use Windows. So I'm gonna oh, try really? to okay. I'm gonna try to get one of them to come on and do like a live stream. Yeah. And I'll test it on like the other Sony that I have mm-hmm. probably. And then um, be able yep. to do it upstairs for the client after that. So to, to recap, if you went uh, deep into our final ep- last episode, Windows is some very old Windows XP era software that connects. You connect over a COM port, you know, the old school, genuine COM port. And then I think it's a four pin header. Is that right, Steve? Do you, do you remember? It's a- yeah, it's a, well, that's the thing. And I'll show, I should have brought the cable down here, but it was up in the garage. Uh, but yeah, it's just like a four pin connector mm-hmm. going into like a VGA adapter almost that plugs in from the port on the computer into the back of the CRT behind the shell. And you can only get in there and, or you can only use that to do certain functions of, yeah. Like it's some software programmability of mm-hmm. those very high end CR VGA CRT Trinitrons. Uh, it's like a service port or something, I guess. And the software yeah. is so old, it only works on old machines. I've been, I wanted to get it going, uh, but I hadn't yeah, taken this next step. So this customer has really switched on. They've got the FW900. They've understood they need the, the Windows can help this software. They've got the authentic XP. They've paid a million bucks for this case. <laughs> so this is a serious job. Uh, when, tell me one thing. When you're yeah. accessing this Windows, on my monitor, I can't see a little flap. Do you have to take the whole back shell off to get to the four pin windows? Uh, from what I understand, I believe you do. So, okay. uh, of course, the first time I worked on the other FW900 that didn't work, which I think has a shorted tube, uh, that one did not have, or I never had a windows capability. So I never even looked at it really. Mm. You know, I didn't have that set up. Now, I was thinking too that if I could get that set up, I could easily replicate that with the gateway Intel PC uh, like tower I have with a I can't even remember what oh, it you is. got Pentium some old XP. three a Pentium three some... XP nice, nice, machine nice, nice, that nice. I restored like two years ago. Yeah, and it was one I got new in college from the actual gateway store. And, you know, I nice. remember buying it, like ordering it, customizing it. Oh, they had the clouds. That was gateway. Yeah, store, the cloud yeah. logo. Yeah. yeah. So I've got yeah. it, and I was like, ooh, that might actually be really cool if I could mm. do that. And uh, I, I think so. that's good because if you you do the hard work, no problems of getting the windows up, I might think when I'm working on it, I was going to try and get it going inside of a virtual machine. So my the part I might be able to provide here is when you get that part understood, I'm going to try and get this going with a USB COM port to a virtual machine so then it's accessible from modern platforms. So okay. you do start one. I'm going to do part two. We'll see how it goes. Oh, because otherwise, be yeah, you've got to have an XP machine hanging around to do well, If you do that, then, yeah, it. we can combine on a uh, yeah. Windows episode. Oh, love it. Love it. Right? Love it, love it. So. Okay. So we're going to get well, yeah. into the Windows. So that's, we've got the FW900. That's a technical thing. Right. Yep. So what about what about you? What's your uh, technical things this uh, week? We'll, we'll get in. I've been doing very non-technical things but i did a few things this week uh, our previous guest robert dale smith who is just an amazing producer of uh, c- controllers he's the guy you might have seen on twitter he's hacking the fisher price controller and added actual an arduino to make it fisher price controller work like normal so i i built two controller adapters based off uh well one based off what robert said so the first one is i showed on a previous episode this is a uh super nintendo to usb so this is running uh, an arduino pro micro and this is running robert's custom firmware he's written his own code for the arduino it's not that different to damon biden to other ones but he's made his own tweaks but what i've always liked about this is it's really solid this this is this is a solid little thing here it's a nice cute design the only deficiency is that you use a what's that micro usb there Mm. and you can see this is not the most 
firm. And I've had one of these come off before. You can get Arduino Pro Micros that use a USB-C here instead. And I've noticed the USB-C connector is much more firm than this. So there's definitely an upgrade to be had here. So Robert gave me this one. And what was very interesting about this and the insight that he gave me was this is just a Super Nintendo now. You flash it, Super Nintendo, good to go, right on. Uh, Robert has since expanded this code and he's integrated the retro stuff with the GP2040 CE project. And that was a project to build a generic code that will work on Switch, PC, P uh, PlayStation 3, I think that PlayStation 4. And it'll run on, not this, but it'll run on a Pi Pico. So we get but a $10 board, a very affordable board. So you can make And your one own, that you can find. No, and you can yeah. find, Yeah, exactly. that's really key. Now, what Robert has done is he has integrated the retro, like it, the Super Nintendo, the Mega Drive, all this into that main project. Basically meaning for about 10 bucks, I could build now an adapter that goes from Super Nintendo to PlayStation 4. And that's huge. Uh, particularly now that um, Street Fighter 6 is coming out, uh, Mortal Kombat 1 is coming out. We're all talking about fighting games on PS4, PS5. Won't do PS5, that's too new. But um, what happened recently was the developers of GP2040 introduced this PS4 compatibility. And the way it was done is someone has hacked the PS4 controller finally. And what uh, this code was out there to extract the firmware. So when you extract the firmware off a real DualShock 4, then the code can uh, impersonate a real DualShock 4. Um, now, there's two ways you can obtain this firmware. You can, it's a little bit technical. You've got to open up your DualShock. You've got to connect to some pins. Not the world's hardest, but nevertheless. However, if you look around the internet and the dark web... <laughs> then some people have uploaded their own firmwares that they've dumped and you can just basically put it straight into a, a nice web console and you can get USB to, uh, you, know, you can get the DS4 running really thin. And I think that's huge and I think it's really going to help. I now, if I want to play Street Fighter Six on my uh, PS4, then I don't need to buy a new stick. I don't need to buy a new whole thing. I could, what I'm going to do is get a Pi Pico, something looking like this, connect an arcade harness up to it so the button harness uh like you would have in your cabinet same thing yeah. and then i can install that inside of an existing stick housing that i already yeah. have just rip out the guts and boom for 10 bucks something like this i can convert a stick to ps4 and this has saved me quite a bit because i don't need to buy a whole new stick i've already got five beautiful sticks with sanwa buttons and levers and and all of that so that's a big that's a big thing the controller thing this week that's awesome yeah um yeah that this community project is coming together and i keep telling robert i'm like dude i think he's still working on the super nintendo <laughs> and mega drive to to gp2040 integration he's still ironing it out but really if you could imagine if you could buy an adapter so 20 bucks super nintendo to ps4 to me this is a slam dunk of a product to sell uh, maybe he makes one that's got a Super Nintendo and a Mega Drive Genesis output too, and it will go to Switch, PC, PS3, PS4. I'm like, dude, this is a oh slam goodness. dunk. You got to sell these these units. So Robert's really he's always working on something new. I like that guy. Yeah, he's yeah, that's brilliant, and that's that's the thing that's really gonna um, make a product that could take it to the next level is something that's more universal, yeah. more relevant to newer hardware and uh, not so just centralized to a single console where we're laughing about these uh, awesome old consoles, but there's not, mm -hmm. there's never going to be as many people buying an adapter. Even if every single person that owned a CDI and uses it, <laughs> yep. if every one of them bought two adapters, it's not nearly as much as mar as getting into those other markets. Right. And I, had a similar problem right well i had a similar problem so i've got some really nice super nintendo controllers that really nice metal hori stick with the drop in sandwich but then i've also got some really nice original famicom uh arcade stick the really small ones from back in the day uh, and they're really nice two buttons because of course original nintendo no way to, what do i do with that so i decided the next thing i made 
was this small adapter. And this has the original Famicom controller. If you've got the OG Famicom, maybe you read the uh, uh, 8-bit add-ons, Roger's video about Famicom, the Law Court one that I was in. Those original Famicoms have this on the side. And a bunch of stuff. This will do one controller, two controllers. You can plug in the tape adapter for the Famicom goes through this. The, the keyboard, if you were using Family Basic, goes through this. So it's a little bit too multi-purposed. And then what I did was... Uh, I this is a and what I did is order this part from AliExpress. So this is just a generic because that's a generic port, and I bought the ribbon cable version. So basically, one cable for each pin, super easy. And then I put in another little Arduino there, and I could see what I've done is rather than soldering the wires directly into the Arduino, I've used uh, these green uh, screw caps, and I just find they make it a bit easier for me. They make it a bit cleaner. It does make it a bit bulkier but it's just a bit easier to screw in and so now i can use my nice famicom sticks on a usb on pc i can play some stuff like that so i didn't have a way to use famicom uh, controllers beyond the original console and i'm happy to have built myself that adapter so these and this is straight up daemon byte code which i've talked about in some of my videos we know this same with robert's stuff it's all one millisecond it's all super super low lag stuff uh, very easy to make. This was, I don't know, six bucks a part, I want to say. And all I had to solder was the green screw terminals onto the board, which is really simple. That's why that's, I do it. That's a very nice looking design there. Simple. Pretty you know, little thing there. You, you could do you that with a hand list. solder iron. You don't need a fancy hacko station or something like that. Yeah. And conveniently, the board kind of slid inside of the back of the unit there. I didn't plan it like that. That just happened. Wow. So, um, yeah, building building adapters this week to help me play some of my controllers. And enjoy your PlayStation 4, I guess, more, right? Hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got it sitting there. My baby. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, welcome with Rob. I had, uh, I had a lady that my wife works with that sent home her, like, grandkids Xbox One this weekend. Yeah. And it's the Xbox One S. And uh, like, oh, do you want to buy this thing? And I, I, my son gets all excited because the, new, the newest system, I mean, we have a Switch, but beyond that, it's like 360, I think. Oh, he's got Series X. That's the the new No, S. no, not even that one. The one before this. The uh. One S. Like, he doesn't understand. It's like, it's not, like, <laughs> it's not that special, right? Poor guy, yeah. Poor kid. Poor kid. Yeah. Let's do that, yeah. And, uh Anyway, we were, we were like taking it out. I was like, we have to test it. Of course, there's no controller with it. He went to his buddy's house and like borrowed his controller, brought it home, and the disk drive doesn't work. And so it's all this stuff. And I'm like, this system is like, I'm looking it up on eBay. I was like, if it's broken, it's not, it's not worth much of anything. Nothing. With I mean, no fi controller? 50 bucks if it was right. new, you know, like, it's, or if it was good. Yeah, if it was good. So. Yeah, so he... Uh, I think he finally started to realize that, but he was like super <laughs> mad at me when I was like, this is not that special. Hey, you. I don't get it. Yeah. Like I'll buy it. I'll buy it with my own money. And I'm like, dude, why? <laughs> anyway, Cause kids want something of their own. Yeah. So what's that saying? That's telling me like kids want something of their own, even though dad, that is the coolest dude. Okay. This sounds terrible. That is the coolest dude out there. That's got all the shit downstairs, but. Yeah, not impressed. Want something for him himself, I guess, that he can call his own, his own project. Yeah. It's man. Yeah. yeah, he's going through that stage. Preteen. Okay. Fuck you, thinks dad. the world's against him. He was telling me today that it's not cool to be a nerd, and I was getting upset. I was like, that's not true. Yeah. I was like, what do you think Hauling of me and everybody that I know is a nerd? Hauling a CRT down the stairs. Yes. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, dude, there's so much wrong with being a nerd. And I was like, you don't, you know, he's all worried about, he's really smart. And he's worried about getting mm. like, oh, I can't be a nerd and always do what's expected of me. So I think he does like really dumb stuff to try to. Yeah. Where does he get that from? Show eh? out. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yep. So, yeah. So does the, 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 C the Xbox one, it's. Just busted completely, or I mean, it's over here. It, it was no. He like downloaded Fortnite, 
and like right. Roblox and nice. played those on it. And uh, that was really it. And then we tried to, you know, stick some discs in it and it wouldn't, it wouldn't, I could see a part, a part on it where it would, it was dropped like a little uh, ding okay. yeah, and then yeah, right yeah. next to the disc drive. And so it's not, it's like, it's like, no, <laughs> not accepting it. So yeah, that was, that's okay though. I'll just give it back to her. Sure. Unfortunately, but <clears throat> that's kind of the technical stuff for the weekend. Yeah. We're getting through that. So in the last episode, right at the end, if you were standing around, I was so interested to hear about, something that steve was doing he's a we've heard the stories he's a good parent he's out there <laughs> and he was training for the daddy dance in uh w- through his daughter's dance presentation slash dance school so since then tell us about there was a preparations for the daddy dance the day you were on stage walk us through it oh yeah okay great so <laughs> i know you hear daddy dance and you know my daughter's seven okay it's to give some perspective some some perspective right and uh now she has been dancing since like two and my wife and her family have always been in dance like that's was her business and stuff for years and even though we've moved she goes to a dance studio here and they have a daddy daughter dance we talked about this a little bit and it's not like a cute come out and do like a slow dance and make everybody cry daddy daughter dance it's Mm. just the daddies and it's it's a hip hop dance. And I had to go to two practices for an hour with like 16 other sweaty dads, you know, about my age, some older all the way to like probably in their 60s. There were a couple guys there God. and they had like kids that were their seen like seniors and uh, multiple kids. And so I think there was like. I mean, there was quite a few dads in this dance. Uh, the one I did, there was like 13 of us, I think, 12 right, or 13. It's a good. good team. So, yeah. And it's this song, uh, Everybody Walk the Dinosaur. You know that sure, song? Okay. Right? Classic. Get on the floor, everybody walk the dinosaur. the dinosaur. Yeah, so that was the silly dance. And, I mean, it's like we had to go and get these lessons. And I mean, I, the first day, Lewis, I, I I was about to like fall over. I was dripping sweat, like yeah. learning this dance. It's like, all right, now we're going to get going. And they crank it going. And uh, it's like, you know, start dancing eight counts to the right. And then you start doing a run and stop. And then the disco and the disco. And then the check me out. And then the arm rolls and then oh, the yeah. Congo line. And I mean, I'm doing all this stuff. I'm like, ah, you know, and, and I. I get in the Congo line and I'm like stepping on the dad's feet in front of me all the time. I'm like, sorry, dude. He probably hated me. <laughs> like by the end of the shows, he wouldn't even talk to me. Right. Cause I've been stepping. He's like, this guy's going to mess my gig up. Yeah. So there was two training sessions like that. Thank goodness. The dance was only about 85 seconds long. <laughs> right. That's what I was like laughing after it was done. I was looking at a play. They kept giving us videos of us dancing to mm-hmm. practice at home. And I was like, oh, this is actually funny. I, I, it's only like 80 second video. I was like, yes, actually, this isn't going to be, it's going to be over before you know it when it actually gets on stage. Do you have this footage? Yeah. I mean, I do, but I don't have like, uh, I don't have like uh, permission, I guess, from all uh, these people to, okay, right, right. it's not just me. It's like, you know, there's like kids in the videos and stuff. Exactly. So I can't really... Oh, it's for the children. Yeah. Yeah. We can't so, show it for the children. Right. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see. Anyway. Who knows? Oh, I'm going to... Don't worry. We'll get it out one day. This the... is... Uh, it's going to be a thing on our channel. We're going to see Steve Daddy Dance one day from the archives. One, you know, so, yeah. Back. That's it cool. Was... So, you did it. Uh, how was the reaction from the crowd? How were they treated? Oh, you? well, that's what I was going to say. I had to actually go do the... Da- that was just the setup. And then I went to the dance, which we were like the second to last number. So, they're like, Daddy's come on back. Uh, funny enough, I... I was supposed to wear black pants and this green dinosaur shirt that I ordered off Amazon. It didn't show up, but we were allowed to wear a green shirt. Thankfully I had just a green t-shirt here. So I had that on under my like nice shirt. And then I went to the Goodwill thrift store and I found these, I don't know. Cause I don't own any black pants. (laughs) I found these like five sizes, too big black slacks that were like pleated. Yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah. Pleated and cuffed black slacks that looked like some kind of MC Hammer pants. And uh, so that's what I did. I had those and I went down to the bathroom before and I just put them on over my shorts. Okay, nice. And uh, got in there and did the dance. I had a special move where I just pulled a big, huge blue comb out of my Ooh. pocket and, and did like this. Did like that, yeah, to the crowd. And uh, didn't trip over anybody. Didn't hurt anybody. Um, everybody was laughing, so I think it was. Oh, that's great! I think it we achieved well. the purpose. Nice. I like this. I like this. So was it at the near the end of this uh, presentation yeah. or whatever? It yeah. Was? Okay. So there was only a couple more dances in it. Oh, sure, sure, uh, sure. But yeah, my daughter was sitting there backstage. Were you nervous watching. before you walked to the stage? You know me, not really. I know I could yeah, tell so. some of the other guys were nervous, but I was like, don't worry, man. This is going to be like over before we know it. And it really was. <laughs> I was. I got off the stage and I was like, I couldn't even remember if I did my moves. Like, I felt like I went out there. Like, I was laughing with my wife and my son. There was this poor girl. She must have been like four. And, and mm. she does this every year, which we've been like three recitals at this place now. She'll just come out on stage and she freezes. Mm like doesn't move and it's sad because she just stands there frozen oh and then somebody basically has to come get her like everybody does but they're real little so none of them are like knowing the moves very much but it uh yeah every year i'm like oh man did you see the girl she froze again yeah the frozen girl that's gonna <laughs> that's what she's gonna be known as it's very so nice that's what that i thought i might have done when i was out there but they're like no frozen some dad, good moves right. yeah and did but, your did your daughter have feedback for you afterwards what did she think Oh, she just tells me tells me it was great because okay. she wants me to do it again. But she's seven; she thought it was funny. Yeah, of course. She only saw it from the side. So, but yeah, she's like, "Oh, you did great! You did so good." <laughs> they were laughing oh, about it. my moves. Yeah, there was all this so this part like right after the Congo line that you had to match up. Like after doing some more moves, you have to match right. up shoulder to shoulder and then do this for like eight <laughs> counts with all fifteen of these guys or thirteen of these guys. And I was like, oh, man, I, like, if you don't get that timing right, you're, like, throwing the whole thing off and, like, tripping uh, everybody. Got to work as a team there, okay? A bit of team yeah, it was really good team building. To do that. So I that was, was my idea. Note. But speaking of, like, yeah, yeah, so that was it. Like, it's a good transition it's cool. team I was building. making a note there when I edit this so I can give you full shot when you're doing this. I want to make sure everybody <laughs> sees this. and not. Oh, I forgot. There's a full camera of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's nice, man. So you were you had some family over last week. You were doing that, so just hanging out and spending some good, some good time with the extended family as well at home. That is true, yeah. And uh, so that was that was a lot of fun. There were some other things we did, uh, but that was definitely the big thing. Was the dance? That's why they were in town. Was for my daughter's dance recital specifically, and she was in at seven. She's in like eight dances, I think she said. Or something like that. Oh wow! And she had to do it twice, so sixteen numbers. It's like good, crazy. All right, I got one for you. I got that. Before we get into my other story, let's go back to my situation right now, where I'm looking to buy a monitor if my mouse okay works or does not work. So I have the possibility. The monitor that I have found it came up locally this morning for about twenty five bucks. It's an auction, but I don't expect it to go high. Uh, it's a widescreen Sony Trinitron consumer model, widescreen CRT, but 15 kilohertz only. So it's as big as it's the it's KV 28 FX 20. KV 28, yep. 28 FX 20. And then there's usually numbers after letters after it. Sorry, I've got oh, the okay. E, which is the Spanish version but they're all the same after that america europe blah 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 so this is uh yeah okay i see so it. i want to talk with you i mean we all can guess how big a 28 inch <laughs> widescreen trinitron is big and heavy and hard but i have noticed that not many come up in my area now my question is though uh what do we think about this is 15 kilohertz only scart inputs s video uh and composite but no right. HDMI, no 720p. You know, I wasn't sure whether to really hold out in case someone later on has got... Uh, I mean, know, it's aw it sounds right. awesome, but it is, like you say, it's 15 kilohertz and it's widescreen, so it is a big challenge that it weighs 44 kilograms. Or, does that say right? Mm. Is that heavy? <laughs> <laughs> it 
Yeah, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> it's like a hundred pounds. I mean, yeah. forty. What about kilograms. um? So, what implications, Steve? Does a widescreen, fifteen kilohertz only monitor has? What exactly are we consuming in fifteen kilohertz that does widescreen wide format? DVD. That's a good question. So maybe PS2 has some options around there. I mean, there's. I don't know that, uh, like, even. I guess you could say widescreen laser disc or something, but I don't even know that you're going to get full widescreen out of that. You're still going to have letterbox, and mm. I don't know exactly. Well, the, the PS2 a contri- has well, the PS2 such has a widescreen um, mode. At, but via is it, the is it in? It's in analog too. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm not so entirely sure how all of it... I think it was very spotty and inconsistent at the time. Uh, how... Because when you say widescreen, well, you're adding pixels. Pixels which cost mm-hmm. GPU and CPU and make your game run slower. So it's not just like, oh, we'll just chuck in the widescreen. Uh, it's actually more screen they have to uh, render. So it's not like, oh, yeah, I could I'd do that. So yeah, so okay, here what would consoles be something... do you use it with? Yeah, it would be something very cool if they... You remember when they came out with these new, like, Super Mario versions with widescreen? If you could somehow reproduce that mm. through 240p and like 480 that style. would be really be cool. Yeah, it's like a ROM hack, ROM stuff, hack on, I don't... on, P- on uh, Super Nintendo. Yep. Yeah, All and right. then there's some other things. It's really, really a niche thing. You want to hook probably some kind of retro PC up to it. To, oh, yeah. Or some kind of device mm. that could, I mean, the Mister, right? You would have some sure. things in there that maybe something in the Mister is going to output. Yeah, well, the, the Mister can, by default, that like, you can send any resolution out the analog output for the menu. You take the scaler, the was the main menu resolution, and then you say hook it up to the scaler, and it sends it out Correct. analog. So, some with that. Wonder if this monitor would be great for a Tate CRT that you just oh, hooked God. up to your freaking uh, oh. Mister. And but (laughs) yeah, a hundred pound CRT for your Tate mode. (laughs) There you go. That's probably the best. That would be fun. Um, Hmm. I also think maybe Dreamcast would have some stuff still in 480i, and you know that you could run. They've got widescreen. There are some widescreen modes, and that was uh, a period. Like it it seems to be. Maybe I think Xbox. But yeah, the point of our discussion is it's that era, whatever you... Is that sixth generation? I don't know, whatever that generation is. You're right, OG Xbox has some of that, PS2, Dreamcast, maybe some ROM hacks uh, at another level. So, yeah, I mean, I know, and no one can answer the question of, do you wait, do you let go of the CRT and wait for the next one whenever it'll happen? Because time's ticking. These things are not getting more. Or do I haul away 50 kilograms of, oh, God, paperweight? And maybe <laughs> no, I put it in my about, office. What about the GBSC? Would that be something that you could use with this in very good at all? I mean, would that no, that wouldn't really be helpful because you're already down there with native inputs on this set. It's already got S-Video. And... All right, I've got to so think about know. that. So the, the GBS can, using the, the dongles that I have, you can get analog. Uh, you can get 15 kilohertz out of it. So... Yeah. Yeah, I want to say I hacked together a GPSC myself. I found it personally, I want to say, to be not as stable as I would like. I found the the downscaling to be a bit tricky, and I think I could only get it to down. Anyway, I, I don't want to speak too much out of turn. Look, I can get it working. I can get it going. <laughs> I would say it's not the savior device that we might hope that it would be. That's probably the Tink 4K coming. Uh, or yeah. maybe I just hacked together my GPS control too quickly. So I always found it a bit fiddly. So, yeah, GPS. It is really fiddly. I mean, I haven't mm. used mine in a long time. And the best scenario I would use mine for anymore is pretty much to connect uh, consoles into my, C- or my Sony GDM uh, C520. That's just, you know, the PC mm. CRT because it only has VGA in. Right. And okay. To do that, it's perfect to upscale. right upscale mm-hmm. a little bit. It does a good job with that. Yes. But even when you do that, uh, my version, I have to go onto a separate PC and check the settings every time. Sometimes it doesn't want to connect to great. Yeah. 
over the Wi-Fi, so... Right, so the GBS control, its admin is via a Wi-Fi. You have to... It connects to the Wi-Fi, you hit a web page, it gives you the the uh, admin screen on that. And, um, yeah, I think it can be a little bit tricky to get that connection up and down. Yeah, it's definitely something that's more on that homebrew edge where yeah. I have not used... Obvi- I mean, I've not used the retro tanks beyond the two or something. That's the... I've got a couple of those, but... Hmm. I, from what I understand, they're simple to use, or they could be complex if you want to, right? Sure. Go in with the firmware, I'm sure. But I know Mike Chi tries to make those much easier to use. Hmm. Yeah, that the the Tink for. I mean, whenever, of course, we don't we don't put any pressure. We're all excited, but we don't put any pressure on Mike. But uh in this scenario the big thing about the retro tink 4k would be that it has more than just hdmi output so the tink right now the two whatever the last one was uh it can out can downscale and you can downscale to 240p but that 240p comes out over hdmi and then you need a separate (laughs) hdmi to component and that works fine but you know it's an extra piece in the in the puzzle yeah, and we all know that anytime you add an extra piece, it's just something yeah. happens, right? There's yeah. always, you're adding something and it's just never as clean as if you just can get keep that out of the chain and, and la- less is better. Even if they're not technically doing much of anything sure. negative that you can tell, there's always, it always seems to be something that can happen, right? Mm. Which is uh, something that we didn't talk about yet where I jumped over and had uh, the OBS problem, you know, yeah, yeah, we're all, you this... have a world of OBS problems. So yeah, I've been doing these streams and it's just, we'll talk one minute about the OBS stuff. I think I finally figured it out. So yeah, first off, I have a lot of, I have, was trying to use, I think too many USB stuff mm. in the cam in this computer. First off. Okay. So uh, that would be giving me spotty performance on some of my devices. And I think that's one of the issues is that, and I've uh, ordered a card that gives you three or five inputs. Oh, USB like a PCI that are card on their that own. go internally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that are on their own paths. There's no draining off, I guess, dual lines within the motherboard that I'm not sure about. I don't know the exact build out right so, okay sure that because they've all got to come in even if it's usb3 if you have multiple usb3s all sending shit loads of data through the one yeah like 1080p yeah. 60 fps right 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 right, right. So, okay <laughs> that's a good one that's a good so trick. that was that's issue one and that's yep. pretty solvable for 30 bucks or less so i've got that on the order uh but then the next thing is every time i get a windows 11 update i figured out my obs would swat or switch back to the installation settings. <laughs> so it would go back to, it went back to software encoding instead of any hardware encoding. Mm. It screwed up um, my cameras to the point where they, they like look over sharpened and weird. Mm. And, and uh, that's what I recorded the whole interview with was like, that. I didn't even realize oh, it was doing yeah. it because I had them set up out of the way and stuff. But uh So I figured out that every time once a week Windows does an update, I need to go in and make sure the settings are same. Is that the solution now? Is there any other way to avoid that? Those those two things will help a lot. And then uh, those two items, I think, are the biggest... Mm-hmm. But is issues. there some way to like stop OBS resetting on every Windows? I know that's another sure. thing. I'll figure that out because I just uh, did the pre-purchase for Epis Fox's OBS school, mm-hmm. which uh, I'm excited. I think that will help yeah. streams Im- immensely for me to be able to figure out and go through that course mm. and really get the settings right because I feel like that's the thing. That this show's missing. I mean, the numbers have been going up on streams. Like, it's been doing good. You've been consistent, which, yep, that's it. Well, it's, yeah, it's been consistently, like, going up a little bit more. Sometimes if I'd stream back-to-back days, the second day always doesn't sure. do as good as the first day. But that's, under. I mean, that's understandable. Long-term thinking is needed here, definitely, not stream by stream. So you're doing good with that. Mm-hmm. So, but, yeah, hopefully that'll fix it because – OBS and all this stuff. I I, th- I found out that it gives a lot of people problems. Bob was complaining about having a lot of the same issues that I have. And, and the cameras. What was the was it Razer camera? 
Yeah, so there's one razor camera that always gives me a pain in a pain in the ass, and yeah. it's always troublesome. The thing is, is once we get off this, uh, our show today, I know that I'm going to be spending five <laughs> minutes trying to get it to turn back on because it yeah. just never wants to turn on. Uh, now, the thing is, when it works, I can actually get it to look really good streaming, like for the CRT at 1080p, 60 FPS, or it'll actually go into NTSC 59 point, you know, okay. nine four mode. Mm -hmm. And that's good. But at the same time, I think it's the still that maybe that the problem is that it's it's trying to send too much data right through yeah. the USB. And I don't know if it's on the same. Now, the capture card I use, the EVGA simple capture card that this camera that I'm talking to you on is hooked up to. Mm. That thing is solid as a rock. Mm. Like it never does anything wrong. Yeah. Uh, but that's a you know, Sony alpha camera running on its own through expensive ass camera. Right. Running. Yeah. It's much more expensive than these hundred dollar cameras. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I think it's been, yeah, it's been a, a crazy stuff and I'm going to probably eventually, once I get it all figured out and run through a lot of that OB OBS course, uh, I might do a video where I show, you know, behind the scenes and talk about all these crazy things that I was just doing wrong. Right. Sure. <laughs> Right, but. so many little things. You think you just plug the cameras in and you're ready to go, uh, but things change. This Windows 11, bad juju from whoever's installed it. It's bad juice. Yeah, uh, and everyone... it did it on its own. It installed yeah. it on its own on this machine. I am so thankful this machine has... No, this machine doesn't have the specs to do Windows yeah. 11. Yeah. You're lucky. My <laughs> other machines are way better and none of them have specs because they're an AMD chip that's not ah, okay. in the family, so that's good. You don't like this. <laughs> So let's get over yeah, to the real exciting thing. Lewis's newest venture. Yes. And I was getting some pictures that were keeping me laughing all last week and weekend where you were doing your newest um, business opportunity, right? Yeah. Let's yeah, let's so. talk about it a little bit more. Why don't you tell everybody? Sure. So I'm, I'm starting work. In, in addition to what I usually do, I'm running a, a comedy group here, running shows and stuff like that. Uh, I am going to be working for a leadership consulting company. They teach leadership and their big thing is that they are all ex-military. So they're ex-military guys. The two founders are ex-Estonian special forces. Uh, there's other various military guys on the team as well. And they run this and they teach uh, leadership. If you've ever listened to the Jocko podcast, uh, it's very much that material. And so it's taken, adapted, but it's the four laws of combat. It's how to, the different rules. If, if you listen to that uh, from Rogan, I got into the Jocko. So uh, I, this all starts probably about five years ago. I'm running this comedy group. Uh, we're all, you know, we're going nuts. We're all over the place. And I came across the Jocko podcast and he's this whole, he's this ex-military guys. They talk about leadership. And I started to listen and I was like, wait, this stuff makes sense. And I was running this group and all of a sudden these things are ticking over. I'm like, yeah, that's okay. I can do that. Usually leadership, leading teams. It's something where based on intuition. It's something you sort of just know or don't know or something like this. And all of a sudden these guys were giving me these tips and rules and ideas. And I was like, ah, oh, I can, yeah, this is helping me. And I just absorbed, I read all the books, absorbed as much as I could. And I found that by using leadership principles, even on comedians, it worked. Crazy ass comedians who are creative and not office workers and stuff like that. It was working on them. Real, the basic versions, like you've got to be very indirect. No, no comedian wants to hear that there's a leader in the room. This doesn't fly. You know, these are not something they typically connect with. But if very you independent. use the right soft, sorry, sorry. Very independent. Very, like very independent people. Very independent. That, right very soft skills you have to, to come across, but the fundamentals were there. So I really was a convert to these ideas and I found how they really helped the group and I tried to get these principles in my, my team. And recently I discovered that there was a, an Estonian version of this, that there was an Estonian guys, ex-Estonian military, and they were teaching these here. And as soon as I saw this company, I was like, I've got to work with these guys. Uh, I've been doing... I've implemented it in my own company. Uh, I started to give my own separate like lectures for leadership. Like I have some customers that know me. So I was like, hey, I can, I've got this talk called Leadership Lessons from Comedy Estonia. 
and I was doing that. And then I met these guys who were running a company and doing it. I'm like, I got to, I don't want to work on my own. I want to do it with these guys. So I met them to understand. And thankfully they're very, they were very accepting of me. And you don't think comedy and art and military goes together. That's the big thing, right? What am I doing hanging out with military? I've never been in the military. We don't have any conscription or anything like this in Australia. We don't have anyone who's going to attack us. What are you going to do? Come to Australia. No one's, you know, <laughs> we don't have Russia next door. We don't have problems with this. So I'm, I'm not a military guy. I have never been in the military. <coughs> I don't know this stuff. But I found these principles and I was like, they work on creative people. Yeah. And also I had a primarily female management team. Worked on them too. Turns out it wasn't just chest thumping dudes running around a field that they they work on uh so i found this company i said i want to work with you guys i'm very fortunate that they gave me an opportunity to speak with them so the way it works is classroom lessons and sure you teach it in a classroom pretty red there's a day course half a day course blah 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 but what i think their big special thing is they run these practical exercises it's called field training exercise or ftx and they set up scenarios it's a huge laser game, like a laser tag is what they use. But you've got a big weapon. It's like a real machine gun. It feels like that. It's as heavy as that. And it's laser tag. You wear a little laser tag thing. And so to teach the practicalities, we do like an hour and a half in the classroom, go through the principles, blah, 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 get some theory down. Then they take you outside, break you off into small five van squads, and you've got to learn cover and move. You've got to learn these tactics. You've got to learn how to walk and work together as a team. And then they set up these scenarios that you have to do straight away. So the first one, in the first one, I was just a straight up bad guy. I was the bad, big bad terrorist. I was Saladim the terrorist. And I'm, so I'm op force, enemy opposing force. They have to come for me and a few other guys. And I'm like, I'm hiding behind a building, holding the gun up from behind the side going, die, die capitalists, die pigs. I can go wild. Die, you American scum. <laughs> well, you've been, a, you obviously have the method acting uh, oh, approach yeah. for this uh, with your, with your beard. And, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you showed me. Your madness. I showed, I showed you some pictures. Look, we're not posting yeah. those pictures to social media, but let's oh just say goodness. I got dressed up for the part. That was great. So that was one scenario. Uh, so eventually they, they, they get me in the end. In the second scenario, I was playing um, a policeman. So yeah. here's the thing. They've captured a... The scenario is the bad guys have captured a policeman. He's the hostage. He's in the back of the car. And I'm, and I'm tied up with handcuffs around my feet, around here. And I'm yelling at the back of this car, like, come get me. They fucking shot me. I'm bleeding. You got to get hurt. You got to get me. I'm setting pressure, pressure on them. And the bad guys have set up positions. So if they walk straight oh, wow. in, yeah, they're going to get shot. So and the bad guys are the other guys you're working with. They're set yeah, up as more, the bad guys. More. So uh, on this one, there was me and three other opposing force. And then there's probably about 15, a squad of three squads of five that okay. have to come in and they have to cover it like move. a rainbow they six style like level back. yeah this is in all real this life is, this is what we're teaching them these practices so mm -hmm. a real good example was uh i was playing an informant so i've got the information i'm a local villager i've got the information where the big bad guy is where osama where saladin where the main guy is and they have to come to me to get that information so they come with me. I fuck with them a little bit. I'm like, what are you going to give me? <laughs> and I was like, I want food. And the yeah. guys look like we didn't plan for this. And the guy gives me something. And I'm like, okay, I'll take that. Sure. <laughs> and then I show him uh, on the map. I'm like, I have MIP. And I show him the map. I'm like, bad guy is here. Well, you must go here. And he's like, oh, the soldier's like, oh, yeah. Can I take the map? I'm like, no, what am I fucking CNN? It's my map. <laughs> I, I got to mess with him. And I can screw around with them. <laughs> and so now they know their primary objective is to get the big bad guy. He's a very bad, very bad terrorist. But the, w the way the scenario works is at the same time I tell them where their primary target is, they get new information that their teammates are in a crashed helicopter, Black Hawk down, uh, 500 meters that way. They're under fire. They need help. That's an emergency situation. So 
they have a choice to make in that moment. Do you go after head bad guy, your primary objective? Do you split? What are you going to do? And it's there's no right or wrong. Well, the wrong is to split the team. Don't split the team. Oh, that is so the wrong? Oh, actually, okay. prob- probably is the wrong thing. You might deplete your forces too much, right. and all of a sudden you've got half a team going into each situation. But that's a no win. You know, that's yeah. a that's you're designed to be in that. So I get to play these role playing games and they're just fun. That's awesome. Uh, I run around, uh, I can hassle them, I can be like, what are you? You know, other one I was playing a villager who was very agitated, but you can't yeah. shoot me. I'm just a civilian, but I'm a crazy old villager who you've come into my Afghan village and I'm very unhappy <laughs> about this. So I'm yelling at you and I'm causing problems, but you can't shoot me. You've got to subdue me. Right. And, you know, get me in there. But at some stage, if you turn your back, I'm going to run around to find my gun that I've stashed around oh. the corner. So if you don't watch me, I'm going to flank you. Did that happen? Did you flank somebody? The first time, yes. The second time, they knew that I was going to try that trick. So they oh, kept eyes nice. on me the whole time. So that's amazing, <laughs> Lewis. This is awesome. So, I mean, I don't even know where to start. That sounds yeah. like incredible. Like I said, almost like a, one of these video games. Like you're literally doing this in real life. Now, I mean, I'm under the correct assumption here that these are like, you're going out. And this is the majority of like business folk. That are being like you're hired as a consultant for a, like you say, almost like a uh, leadership boot camp style training yep. session. And that, I mean, just the fact of like this little explanation here, I'm sure it's going to, I mean, that sounds like something that would really uh, interest a lot of companies. I hope um, so. That practical element to you, it's not just that. sitting in a boring classroom. Those guys are really smart also, though, to involve right. somebody like you that's from a different perspective but has the same almost ideas and, like, vision for this whole thing, it sounds like. Yeah. So, at first, it seems weird. Military guys with the comedy guy, right? Or the retro guy, if maybe that's, you know, the work you know me from. And it doesn't seem compatible. But because through my study of these leadership techniques, I understood it's the same. It doesn't really matter. So, certainly, I'm... I have to, I've had to consider my situation because I'm the first non-military and non-actually Estonian instructor that they will have. So, but I'm used to working in a team of Estonians and that's the idea that I need to present them in a more human way. They're cool dudes. There's no problems with them once you know them, but everybody thinks the military is strict. Uh, yes, sir. No, sir. Boot camp, full metal jacket, yelling at people. Some of it is sure. But the way that as soon as you're not a low-level grunt anymore, you're not the private or the inductee, as soon as you get some sort of position, you've got responsibility, they, it's a very different scenario. Again, as much as I've understood, I don't want to speak too much out of school here. Um, so I'm able to, and I've applied, and the idea is I can say, yeah, yeah, special forces, excellent. But I've also applied these to a bunch of crazy comedians and they worked as well. So that's the... The angle that we're, we're bringing we're it from the this. the more pri- uh, more private or you know into industry like you're taking a government style of things into um, you know out to the marketplace kind of and uh, yeah if it can you work have for to be able right can work for business people as well for the office workers right and you would think well even though these guys are all ex military there's probably not gonna, your your guys probably aren't going to be brought in to like do training for the military. You're going to have to go and take those principles to other places, you know? So that's a good thing. Like being able to take it to that next yeah. uh, level. So like, what was the, if you don't mind, if it's mm-hmm. capable, Let's go. Yep. what was the business that was there? Like what type of business would you categorize it? And also what was like the scale or size of that employee mm. uh, structure almost? So we're quite varied. The first team the first course that i went on was actually a football team a local uh jk tamaka if you're here yaki Kami, if you're here in estonia so they're all a football and soccer sorry soccer. sports te- but a sports team sports team right. so they use they're young guys and they're uh-huh. fired up so they're young and dumb but they're also a sports team so they're used to working as a team so that was right. a different dynamic they already understand some of this even though they're you know they're all 19 and charged up uh, there was that. Secondly, it was Viking Security. They're a bunch of security guys, security firm, but they're okay. management. Not quite the dudes on the, the ground, but one level up. But still, they're ex. Yeah, if you're running a management security, you've worked on the door a lot. 
So working with those guys. Tomorrow is a more straight up management. It's for an uh, energy company here. Part of, they've got a big company. So some of their senior management. We're working between 15 and 25 people, maybe around 20 is the maximum we want for this exercise in this form. Uh, so we can still have groups of teams and enough instructors and enough... Because uh, even even four role players is really not enough to give a true sense of the feeling. You've got to do some imagination that this crazy guy with a beard is actually Ahmed from the village. Right. So, <laughs> well, you know, you need a bunch uh -huh. of role players to make it work. So small teams, 15 to 25, and a rate, I would say quite a range of companies so far today i was doing a sales call with just a straight up uh there's some tech 25 people in a tech startup from brussels you know very hip all working very nerdy uh deep ai sort of stuff they're working on yeah we're gonna do it with those guys as well so what is it what's like when you run these scenarios what's the environment and how does that go like setting up you know what i mean like when you go out and you do these exercises is it in like a local somewhere local that is like a park or is it like okay, yeah. is it like on the property of the business sometimes it's, I, I would imagine that would be different depending on who you're working with unless everybody came is the idea for them to come to you or you to go out so mostly to like if it's a fear i mean the theory aspect is that could be a classroom anywhere right yeah. sure so that's that's pretty standard but these field days uh they run them in doesn't have to be a dedicated space but they do find some interesting area there's a in Tallinn they mostly use outside of Tallinn there's an old Soviet missile base oh, wow. that is That's used awesome. and we actually couldn't use it last week because the actual Estonian army was using it for <laughs> for purposes but you'll love this one Steve so the one we did last week was on the grounds of a school <laughs> this is the best oh, oh I love God. Estonia for these kind of things so They've got a whole wing of the school that's not being used. It's fenced in. It's the Tabasalukul outside of Tallinn, if you're Estonian. And there's, it's not many people there because it's kind of summer, but there's still students. And then it's us running around with replica weapons, running around this greater schoolyard. And that's totally cool. No problems. <laughs> no feeling about shooters in a school or something like this. I had to point oh out goodness. that this was friggin' weird that they were asked to run <laughs> yeah. shooting exercises in the school. Well, I mean, it's like, that's way more realistic of a scenario. <laughs> in America you know? it is, yeah. It's like, yeah. So now, I mean, you've got, that. that's like incredible. I was trying to think, like, what would you do here? It would be the same thing. It would be outdoors. Or even now, America has this big problem with too much office space that nobody wants to use. And, sure. and you could like, oh, well, we'll go rent it out for a week. And run a freaking SWAT team almost yep. exercise in this building to get uh, business executives and stuff like that. I mean, I could just imagine how pumped up. And I, that just sounds like something cool that not really um, – like I've heard of other – I know other people that do the classroom things. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I graduated – high, or I didn't graduate high school. My wife graduated high school with a guy who actually went on to be in the Navy SEALs. Right on. And seeing action. And that's what mm -hmm. he does now is leadership conferences. But from what I understand, it was just straight up uh, sure, the talk, the classroom aspect. stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so this next level is just, that's awesome. It's very it's crazy. <laughs> tomorrow, we're doing, uh, tomorrow we're doing what we call the combat hike. So we aim okay. to teach and show the same principles, but rather than being stationary or based around one thing, uh, and we don't use the weapons. So the combat hike is a, trying to sh demonstrate the same principles, but it's actually done in the format of a hike. And I haven't done, we do about five to 10 kilometers or something. I haven't been on one of those. And some, some customers don't want the weapons, even though they're laser tags. Some, I don't know, the feeling is because it's a different vibe here in Estonia because almost every uh, Estonian male has done conscription they have the one year or nine months worth of mandatory service over here and again russia's next door so that's why such things happen so there's already some familiarity most adult men have done six months let's say of of army right. training or something like that but nevertheless there can be people that not into the weapons for some reason even though they're replica so we'll do the hike tomorrow uh and i said i'd tag along just because it sounds like good exercise and good to be outside for the day 
Well, and yeah, to be part of everything and see what's yeah, going on, see what that side. Because I, I think that you're right. I think you could even set up really cool exercises where it's more of like maybe somehow you got stranded behind a enemy lines or, you know, yep. a, in a different territory. And it's mm-hmm. more of like a pursuit, like you're being pursued by a team. Mm-hmm. No weapons involved. Your, your task might be to get to a checkpoint or find the checkpoint to get everybody out and all that kind of thing. It's just like yeah. you could do a lot, I think, there. And still keep the intensity up. And I could see how in something like, you know, you have um, the footballers where you, there's going to be already natural hierarchy of leadership there too, where there's team captains and they're used to falling into line, working as a team for things. Mm. And I would even see, say that I bet you the security people were a lot, uh, maybe like that too, from an assumption perspective. I don't know. Maybe they weren't. You never know. They're pretty good. Yeah, they're a yeah. pretty good team. So they so, they were too bad as well. They uh, right again because cool. again most of those males have already done six at least six months of something. But um, yeah, so it's very interesting work. Uh, I'm really excited to be working with these guys and using my skills in a new area. And I never thought that I'd be working with the military guys directly like this and we've got to do look there's it's not just all running around the paddock either uh we've got to develop courses we've got a lot of inf- uh, they've been running for about a right. year and a half now so i've got to do sales i've got to get customers in uh i need to work on my own version of the course and, and how i'm going to develop so a lot of business development to be done as well um yeah but this is more of like your um do they have an office or is this more of you like working on your own and then meeting up or is that we don't have a direct office. We have a couple of supply places where they leave stuff that they need. Okay, right. When you come to the course, you get the drink bottle and the notebook and the T-shirt and all that stuff. Uh, but not a direct office. So I'm doing more video calls than I've ever done. Since the pandemic, <laughs> I haven't taken so many. Oh, I, I fucking hate video calls. So, okay. <laughs> look, I'm doing what I need to do. You say I'm on the call, I'm on the call. Fine. But yeah, so I'm doing that. <laughs> doing my duty. Uh, do you do it from this room? Yeah, yeah, Like, the yeah, setup? Yeah. And so they always see... have all this cool stuff, and they just, like... Everybody else's background's probably just, like, boring. Yeah, something. And I've got the anime Dodonpachi yeah. in the background, and Mario <laughs> Kart and everything sitting here. So, hey, they're cool dudes, and they know who I am, and they know what I'm about. So, it's... Uh, that bit, we're working on Online Academy, so... Uh, okay. They've Another worked. We've got an Estonian right? version right now where you can take some self-paced courses. They've recorded that, and once I settle in a bit further, me and uh, one of the main trainers are going to start to record the English version. Oh wow! Uh, so I help a little bit with this native accent, as they're all Estonians. So uh, a little bit, and I'm going to be working on international business development. So they want to expand beyond Estonia. They already have some international customers, oh, and my focus is going to be on. Opportun- what a wonderful opportunity to come to America. I hope you. so. I hope so. I want to travel. <laughs> I want to. I'm good to be on the road. Cool. Um, yeah. So it's keeping me very busy. If it seems like my uh, what have I made this week? A couple of Robert adapters. <laughs> well, because I've been doing stuff. The uh, real, good. real life stuff. Yeah. Remember the real life. Yeah. yeah the real um, life, the non online stuff. Remember yeah, that. Yeah. So I'm kind of. Yeah. Uh, I'll keep posting the pictures. You follow me on Zez That's Retro. I'll help. follow some of those uh, as I'm doing these exercises, keeping everyone informed of the kind of crazy hijinks they let you get up to run around with a big replica weapon and yell at people and yeah so i love it yeah i'm happy to have a new project you know i'm happy to have a new direction it's a good team because i have plenty of before this i would say i have plenty of spare time on my hands you know too much spare time can be an issue it's not like i was making way more videos before you know you always drag a bit so i'm good to be good to be a bit busy well, and you're going to eventually become, you know, you stay with this team, you'll become, I'm sure you're going to be making some pretty new, closer relationships because you're in kind of so. like a team where, again, ex-military people, they're a lot closer than just a normal office would be, right? That's right. why they are coming to get you guys to come and train them to have, I mean, more of a team and mm. leadership environment that you guys are offering. And I'm sure that it's all going to be really good. 
Uh, We've spoken about that in the past, Steve, that as middle-aged men, it can be often yeah. difficult to make new friends. It's not a skill that our demographic is known for. So it is nice that these uh, guys have accepted me. They've been very cool. If you're humble and you want to learn and, and do your part, they're accepting. And I, I found that very, very nice atmosphere. So, yeah, it is good to have more male friends around my age. Um, actually, I think they're even younger men. You've got these guys that have done 15 years and... 10 in special forces and they're only 35 and you're like holy shit okay these are so it's good yeah. to learn from special forces dudes yeah. as i say with my moomin cup okay i'm a tough guy <laughs> yeah real freaking tough with my moomin cup right here oh my goodness it's a bit of fun one fun one yeah Lewis. buddy okay so we're gonna wrap up so you're gonna angrily yell at your razor camera for a while <laughs> and then we're gonna I'm try ready. to have a stream in about half an hour or something Something like yeah, that. so we'll we'll see each other soon. But great. as for Everybody. this episode, it's been wonderful. And, uh... I have fun. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, we're, we're deep into the episodes. We love it. Follow Steve. Follow me. We'll see you next time. Ah, my mouse doesn't work. There we go. No, wait, wait. Stop. <laughs>